Okay, so I've just returned from a really nice weekend up in uh, near Seattle, uh, Bellevue, Washington, for a festival called Wintergrass. Um, a lot of fantastic musicians. We saw some really great shows, um, beautiful instruments, a lot of cool builders up there, a lot of really cool stuff. Anyways, I had a great time. Um, I unfortunately did not have a chance to put together any content for this week because I was out of town. So I've been wanting to talk a little bit about how to register parts. I've had a few questions um, on Facebook and Instagram and, and YouTube here. And um, people want to know how to register parts, mainly for the flip. But um, the flip is, is a minor case. Here I have the scroll here. And this is just a little test cut I've been doing on the scroll to get things worked out. And this one has multiple registrations. So you're, you can possibly be uh, multiplying your tolerance um, with each registration. So you have to be very careful. So in the case of this one, I'm registering it as the XY plane here, and then flipping it over in the XY plane here again, and then flipping it up and the XY plane here. <laughs> and then um, this will actually go over again and get this back done. So there's quite a few of registrations on this and uh, I'll get into how I do that. But first off, let's look at uh, the back and the top. So I have the back, or sorry, this is the top. Um, and uh, the way I like to do this is I like to just add a quarter inch of stock around. So you can see here in this operation, I call this top inside. And uh, I just added a quarter inch of stock all the way around the part and I've, ke I've kept the thickness of the stock at exactly the thickness of the, of the part. See. Um, the other thing I've done is I've set the origin right here at dead center in the stock. So I'm using, for the top and the back, I'm using book match parts, right? So that that's nice. And unless I have a really good book match, it's very hard to see that book match line. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a line down that stock and all the way around at the exact book match line. And then I will uh, register CNC machines XYZ point off of the bit with uh, with that center line. So we'll go out to the machine and show you a little bit about how I do that and how I make my accuracy even better. Um, I don't manufacture parts, so a lot of times you'll see people using pins or fixtures to register these parts. And pins and fixtures are fantastic for registering parts. Um, you have really the same issue. Um, you can't do multiple operations without in some way multiplying your tolerance. So um, they, they also have their limitations. So um, because I'm making single parts and I don't want to spend a ton of prep time uh, creating fixtures for each one of these uh, operations, um, I pretty much use the super glue tape system. So I'll show that to you outside when we go outside there. So yeah, so this one, this is how I've done that. Um, so, and then you see here, when I go to the outside, I've just set the origin exactly opposite. So, um, I always, that's the other thing I do as I always set the origin from the top of the stock. So when I'm setting the XYZ on the machine, the first thing I do is I'll set, I usually use a half inch bit to do this. So I'll bring up the bit on the top of the stock here to the Y axis and then I'll zero it and then I'll increment it by 0.25 because that's half the dimension of the bit. And then I'll come over here to the edge of the stock and I'll, I'll indicate off the edge of the stock and I'll do the same thing. Um, and then for the Z, I'll actually go to the bed of the stock and I found that using the super glue tape system that I use, it's pretty accurately just a little bit over 10 thousandths of an inch. So what I do is I come up from that Z zero from the bed, 10 thousandths of an inch, and then the thickness of the part. So um, a lot of times I'll just write that down. So I'll go over here to edit, and then I can see here in my stock that the, the Z height on uh, this part is 0.563. So I'll just write that down in my notebook. And when I go out, you can also see it in the toolpath in Mach 3. But I'll just go out to my CNC machine and then I'll set my X and Y. And I'll set my Z first 10 thousandths, 5.63. And, uh, and then I'll be all set with my XYZ. 
I usually do a little sanity check or a jogging machine around the perimeter of the part just to make sure that everything's inside my stock um, surface. But uh, we'll get to more of that soon, so let's go outside of the shop and check that part out. I broke the ribs out of the out of the mold and uh, traced the insides of those corner blocks. We trimmed down those corner blocks and then I re removed that excess material in there. I intentionally left excess material in there that I had to take down my hand because I didn't know where those corner block shapes are going to end up in the end. Because um, since those were cut by hand, I decided to do this relief by hand. Um, so I've got that all set up. So the next step is to cut F-holes in this thing, um, which is... Uh, a really interesting process. Um, I'm not going to be showing you that um, running today, but that'll be in the next video probably. But um, the most important thing is, and this is what we've been talking about, is registration on a machine, right? So I have a center line on this part that I've been working from. So I did an inside cut, uh, outside cut that I left at extra stock, and then a final finish cut, and then I flipped it over. I did rough cut, and then a kind of a finish rough cut and then I did my um, inlay cut then I took it off the machine and um, put, installed the inlay then I had to re-register it on the machine again and then do the final finish path and the, cut off the stock to leave on the final um, outline so that's a lot of registrations and and the way I do it is I think the most important thing is getting the part so that it's registered like in the on the for me on my Z axis I'm sorry not my Z so for me on the X axis of the machine here I'm trying to get that part like really well centered so I do the same thing that I do with all my parts you've probably seen it in all these videos is I'll put a couple of pieces of tapes down and I'll burnish them in you burnish that tape in and it just really adheres to the part really well and it comes off evenly too so it's kind of nice I'll lay it back down and then I'll line it up perfectly with the center line uh, that I've drawn on the board. This center line is actually drawn by the machine, so it's dead square with the machine. Um, then I'll mark where those pieces of tape that I put on came out. You might be able to see some, a few marks here from all the different things that I've been cutting. Um, then I'll take it back out, put those tape along those lines that I created, burnish those in, put super glue accelerator on the side of the part and then just lay it back over, line it up perfectly and set it down in there. Um, because of the accelerator, it goes off really quick. It's probably, it's gonna hold the part there in seconds, three or four seconds. So, cause the super glue is gonna be squished out really thin on that tape. I run a thin bead, but it's gonna squish it out really thin and it's gonna be coming in contact with that accelerator and it's just gonna harden up really quick. So, once I've got that there, then I'll bring my machine over and I will center up the left side. I like to center up the left side of my bit to the center line of my part. And then um, I have a little 10 key USB pad that I've got set up with a bunch of Mach 3 controls on it. And um, I will set this on thousands. I'll jog in thousands of inch. And I will line up this edge of that bit with the center of the pencil line. And then I'll move over the half the dimension of that bit. That'll give me my Y. And then for the X, what I usually do is that I just set, I just do it off the part. So I'll run it up until it just barely, again, jogging by thousands, and until it just barely grazes the side of the part. And if I had a, a 10,000 stock to leave, then I know that I'm 10,000 from the plus half the diameter of the bit from there. Um, and that's been a way that I've been able to register really, really accurately. Um, my parts come out, uh, well, good enough for me. I'm, I'm happy with them. So I do have a, a couple other techniques I do. So I've got this uh, little fixture I've got set up here, and this is just a piece of MDF that I put down on the board, and I cut a square out of it with a little relief here for a corner of the part. And this is for doing my, my neck that I'm working on. Um, I'm trying to work out the tool pass for the scroll. so doing a lot of test cutting. So this is how I do it. Um, I don't like making full width of bit passes, um, especially when you're doing cutting a round part in a square piece of wood. Um, so what I do is I create a little template like this, and this template is, is outside the stock material. And I'll actually just put this on here. And I actually made my stock in the cam for Fusion 
from this outline. So they're the same. So I take this and I put it on here and then I go to the bandsaw and I cut out this shape. And then when I go to cut the outlines, I'm only cutting less than half the width of the bit. So I can be a little bit more aggressive and I don't have to worry about little pieces of wood coming out and jamming in things. Um, and so after I get that cut out, and so I've intentionally I've left a surface here and a surface here that are both square. So I can still take that part and put it in here and I can register it in perfectly. And then I can flip it over, do the same thing, setting my X, Y, and Z just as I've done with all the other parts. And I can register it in all four positions that I need to do to cut this part. So um, up next, we're gonna be cutting those F-holes in this top. Um, that's gonna be really cool. So um, definitely if you wanna see that, give me a subscription, give me a like, comment, any of that stuff, that's great. Um, and we'll see you next time, thanks. Thank you.